Yes, what? Well, I know, but we have to watch your, wash your new ones first, okay? We don't want your butt to fall off. Hello, hello! Welcome back to another Fire Tuna Club video. It's Kit Kat here. It's time for a Monster High pattern follow along. Depending on which pattern piece you choose, you'll be able to make leggings, tights, or capri pants for your Monster High doll. Full disclosure, this pattern was simply drafted on and digitized for you based off of a Monster High tights pattern. So there's nothing special about this, and if you can draft patterns yourself and have some factory clothing, you don't actually need this pattern. But if you want to save yourself some time, feel free to download and follow along to this video. If you haven't already, head over to the Fire Tuna Club blog at firetunaclub.blogspot.com. Check the quick links to the left and find the Monster High patterns. You'll be looking for the Monster High Pants and Tights number one. Print off the pattern, cut it out, and let's get started. First item on your supply list, and the most important, is a stretchy, stretchy material. If you do not use a stretchy material, this pattern will not work. You also need scissors, both fabric and paper cutting scissors. Though I myself prefer using a rotary cutter these days to cut out my patterns, I would recommend a smaller rotary cutter for doll patterns because the 45mm is just a bit too big to take the curves. You'll also need some elastic, not as much as pictured here, just eighth of an inch. You shouldn't need more than three inches. You'll also need some pin. Ideally, you would use silk pins, but I don't want to lose these pins on my carpet, so I use the iron-friendly button pins you see in the video. And don't for- Ooh. Hello there, beautiful. I mean, um, however you mean to sew, be it hand sewing or machine sew, you're so pretty. While not required, if you do need a marking option, I suggest chalk. It comes off easily and does not stain your material. Once you've printed out your pattern, don't forget to use the sizing boxes to make sure that you've printed out at the correct size. Cut it. Get your fabric. Depending on your preference, you want to pin or trace your pattern onto your material. And also, depending on your preference, use scissors, or in my case, a rotary cutter to cut out your pattern. A really great way to make step number two easy is not to cut out this little part right here and simply put it in the sewing machine, paper, fabric, and all. Another bonus tip is if you're working with difficult materials, tear away stabilizer is your friend. If you don't have any of that, paper works just as well. Or tissue paper. Recycling is good for the environment, guys. So you'll want to go ahead and sew along the number two line. and then cut out the excess. A really handy tip to get those perfect quarter inch seam allowances is use a measuring gauge. Use the half inch measurement so that you know where to fold your material up to and sew from there. Again, tear away stabilizer or paper is your friend. Don't forget to remove it every time like you're supposed to clip your threads every time. <clears throat> then you want to pick a leg, it doesn't matter which one, only one of them though. Pin it in place on your tearaway stabilizer or paper, and then sew it down. To keep this tutorial for beginners, I'm covering a specific method on how to do the waist hemline. If you know of a better way, or a quicker way, or a different way, by all means use that way. That being said, even someone who is, I would say, an advanced sewer, can still have trouble here and there depending on the material you're working with. As you can see here, I had a bit of a mistake here at the seams where it got too thick and the stitching jumped all over the place. This is why this part is strongly encouraged to be hand sewn. It's just less trouble and less time, in my opinion. Do whichever method you feel comfortable with. Quick repeat of step five for clarity. Once you've folded down your waistline and hand sewed it in place, you'll want to go ahead and get a darning needle and your three inch piece of elastic. Remember that elastic has to be eighth of an inch wide.
Before your elastic disappears, you'll want to hold it in place and baste it, or you can use a pin. I just find it easier to sew through basting stitches. You'll want to repeat this step for the other side as well. This is mainly to keep the elastic from disappearing into the pants. Your project should look something like this. Elastic in place, one leg done, other leg flapping loose. I flipped the pant leg out earlier for ease of sewing. If you didn't, you don't need to do this step where you pull the pant leg back in. This is literally just to make sewing easier for you. Do it as you need to. You'll want to line up that seam again, pin it in place, sew it down, you're nearly done. Just so you know, I do also like working at the quarter inch seam allowance. The pattern does include eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you're brave, I am not because I know that if I sew it a quarter inch, I can always cut down to an eighth of an inch. So, keep that in mind when you're sewing. You want to flip the pant legs out, and basically at that point you're done. I'm going to show you some comparisons here in a second, as well as some mistakes I did. I made this pattern three times, recorded it three times, to make sure I got all the kinks ironed out, so these are the mistakes I did. Right here, <laughs> I've zigzagged on tearaway. You, you don't do it. Don't zigzag on anything you plan to tear away. It's a pain in the butt. I also, at one point, was sewing along the wrong seam, so as you can see that the right tights look correct. The left tights look wonky on the butt because at one point I believe I was sewing a quarter of an inch and the other point I believe I was sewing a half an inch? No. Something like that, anyway. Not to mention, I also had a wonky sewing line again because I decided the first time I didn't learn my lesson, I needed to do it the second time on the black capris to mess up the hem. Remember, mistakes happen. Even someone like me who's done it several times and knows what she's doing, mistakes can still happen. Word of advice, guys, don't sew come hell or high water if you're dead tired. That's the best way to make mistakes. That being said, one last tip about this pattern set. The tights are great. They are not great unless you use a super, super, super thin fabric. So just keep that in mind. That's why I suggest this pattern be more for capri pants, leggings. And I will be coming out with another pattern later that actually goes by a standard pants pattern. I just thought this would be helpful for people who want to have nice skin tight clothing. Hey, thanks for sticking it out to the end. Thank you so much for watching. If this tutorial helped you out, or you've liked some of the other videos on this channel, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to find Fire Tuna Club on some other social media sites, they are listed on the screen. And I'll see you when I finish another project.